you know, we're having a great time out here. I'm with my wife, Barb, and uh, we're just coming out to do some late winter ice fishing. And uh, we're going after perch because the walleye season's closed. And I just wanted to share a couple tips with you. So we've got a gorgeous day. The temperatures have been above zero during the day and a little bit below zero at night. But we've got about probably a foot and a half of ice. But the one thing that I have to caution you this time of the year in March is that you get pressure cracks that open up in a lot of places where they open up, you'll see patches of open water around because the ice will actually get thinner. Also, when you're coming from the shore onto the ice, a lot of times there starts to be separation. So choose your spots to access and come onto the ice. And then when you're on the ice, especially with a machine, we're using an ATV to move around today, um, you have to really look and make sure that you keep away from any dark areas because they could be thin ice or open water where you actually see the water below the ice. So if you can see behind me here, most of this is all uh, you know solid ice so we've got like a foot a foot and a half of ice so let me give you the first tip you know a lot of times when we're fishing for perch we just use artificial lures but look what i'm using today i'm using a little thin spoon that's it right there and i've got a half of a minnow on there so the minnow is actually dead that's just the head so what i've done is soak it once through it and when i put it in the water and i jiggle it a little bit it has a really nice action so I'm using it on four pound test line. And this is just a little ice fishing outfit. It's made for panfish. So all I do is drop it down and I've got a sonar and I see that there's fish there already. So I let it go down all the way to the bottom. I, I often use um, braided line, but I've got monofilament line on this time. So you can see my line is slack. So it's on the bottom. I'm just gonna jig it a little bit, lift it up, see if I can get a fish to come up and cooperate. We've been getting average size perch we haven't really been targeting the big jumbos so you can see the way i'm fishing it i'm not jigging it like you would for walleye or lake trout if you watch my rod tip you'll see it just tug down a little bit when a fish hits oh, this is getting close to the hole so i'm just shaking it and lifting it and i'm keeping one eye on my rod tip oh, there i just missed the fish i don't know if you saw that snap i can lower it back down again so let's see if i can get one here live if not I'm gonna go on and give you the other tips so oh I missed another one so they might be smaller so this rod is actually pretty sensitive um, and perch usually strike when you're actually keeping the lure stationary or lifting it slowly unlike walleye that a lot of times when you're jigging for walleye when you're jigging and the lure is on the downstroke, there's another hit right there, another one's working it. You think I could hook it? Maybe it's smaller. Oh, okay, got one. So the, the, wall, the perch will come up and it'll actually hit it when it's on the way up. So that's not a keeper, but you can see how he's got all three hooks in his mouth. I'm gonna try not to hurt him too bad. Um, and see if I can get one hook out, the other hook and the other hook. Okay, so that's a small perch. I'm gonna just let him go. You can see him take off in a minute there. These are the size of the perch that we've been keeping. Look, see these are, they're not monsters, but that's a really nice eating size perch. It's got nice wide shoulders. And uh, I don't know, we've got about uh, a dozen and a half here. And I still have my, my head of my, of my minnow here. So I'm gonna put it back on. Sometimes I've caught four or five fish. I know some people will put like an eye of a minnow on there. So that's my rig. The other thing that I wanted to talk about when we're out here, you know, um, having reliable power is really important. And I've gone through using manual aug augers and then working my way up when I was younger, I'm talking like 40 years ago, to using uh, fish finders. And then now we even have, um, you know, power augers that are uh, battery operated, like the Strike Master that I've got here, which is very dependable. And my sonar's powered over here. But I want to just share with you this little box right here, the Simcoe Power Box. You know, uh, Enzo Ventimiglia um, created this thing. And there's other boxes, I think, on the market. But he's really devised a great system to store power. So the box is uh, solid, so you can put it in your hut. And, you know, we're pulling two portable huts, and there's no problem moving them. Um, what I like about it is that it's got all kinds of attachments. So if you have uh, different clips on different electronics like your sonar, you can just use the positive and negative right here. It's got a battery, um, like literally like a car lighter, 
um, thing to plug in. And over here we've got a, a USB, two of them right there, you can plug in. And then the main power switch. What I really like is at night, you know, a lot of times we'll stay out just before dark, it also has lights that are pretty strong. Right now the sun is out so you can't see it. But where the power comes from in the Lake Simcoe power box, I've got to show you here, is the lithium technology. So look, that's how he's, he's uh, very neatly applied everything. But if you look there and if you can see, that's a lithium. It's a 12 volt battery. And let me tell you, from my using the lithium battery starting last fall, I'm very impressed. They uh, hold a charge much better in cold weather, like out on the ice. For their size, they have a lot of power. They're very easy to charge. You can charge them really quickly. And they maintain their power right up until the end. So when they're done, they're done. That's when you take it back in and you charge it. And you can see here that I've just added some material padding so that when I'm, I'm traveling and if the sleds are bouncing behind the ATV, they're not gonna bounce around. But I'm telling you, having the Linoc battery in there is awesome. And uh, I've got power to spare. So you know what? I think that we probably have enough for a beautiful dinner for two of us. So I think we're gonna pack it in. We've had a beautiful evening. Look, we've got a gorgeous sunset going down in behind the trees. It's a good day.